Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to our first webinar on UQ1 series applications and uh, IOLink communication. But uh, what about UQ1? It's this uh, little strange and powerful object here. In other words, an ultrasonic sensor. But first of all, uh, let me introduce myself. I'm uh, Giovanni Principe, uh, the product manager for ultrasonic and capacitive sensors here in uh, MD uh, microdetectors. And today uh, I'm going to uh, lead uh, this, uh, I hope, interesting webinar. But uh, anyway, uh, don't worry because it lasts just uh, 45 minutes about. Uh, I'm not alone uh, here because uh, there is uh, uh, my uh, colleague uh, Giovanni uh, Di Lorenzo here uh, who is going uh, uh, and Giovanni uh, is going to support me, uh, is going to uh, catch and answer to your uh, questions or uh, better is going to try to answer to uh, all uh, of your uh, uh, of your questions so please if you have any doubts if you have any curiosities if something is not so clear write it down to Q&A uh, uh, profile and Giovanni uh, will be very happy to answer you right Giovanni yeah okay so thank you very much John I think now we can go. So, what are we going to discover today? First of all, we are going to um, having a look on the UQ1 series in terms of technical features and in terms of uh, the main advantages and benefits you can have uh, in uh, adopting this product uh, for your applications. Then, we are going to compare these two product families, UK, UQ1 uh, and UK6, and we are going to discover why they are so similar, but overall, why they are so different. Then uh, we are um, discovering uh, on the field, which are uh, the, the main interesting applications where you can use these, this product. Uh, we have selected just um, uh, some application because for uh, we have limited available time. Obviously, there are uh, hundreds of applications, and we we can discover them if you are um, if you are curious, uh, and you can uh, obviously uh, contact us. Then uh, we are going to uh, have these. Uh, practical section, let's say. As we say in Italian, uh, we are going to uh, put our hands into the mouth in order to, to, to make pasta. It means that uh, we are going to, uh, to see practically how a, a sensor works and uh, uh, first of all, how to save the uh, settings in order to get the desired uh, information. Then uh, we'll have uh, um, some uh, theoretical uh, uh, discussions about um, uh, the possible benefits um, in adopting the IOLIN communication. And uh, at last, but not least, uh, we are playing a little bit with the IODD file, so the IOLIN device description file, in order to uh, understand, uh, uh, practically speaking, which are the, the benefit we can get from uh, uh, a new Q1 uh, um, sensor IOLINK model. So uh, let, let's discover uh, something about the UQ1 series. Why series? Because of course we are not speaking about a single product, but we are talking about a family, a set of different models. First of all, we can, uh, we can define the UQ1 product as a, uh, an hybrid sensor. Why hybrid? Because uh, its body is uh, basically cubic with M18 thread. 
and as we are going to to see later on uh, these uh, Allow you allows you to have uh, um, benefits in terms of uh, fixing and installation. A first clustering uh, um, to classify our models can be based on the distance, on the operating uh, range. In fact, we can distinguish among these uh, different subfamilies: UQ1A, UQ1C, UQ1D. The first one having a, um, a distance uh, from 40 to 300 millimeters, the second one from 60 to 800 millimeters, the last one from 80 to 1,200 uh, millimeters. But what about this uh, first number? It's the so-called blind zone, the, the, the dead zone. What does it mean? It means that within this minimum distance, uh, these models are not able to uh, see anything, to catch signals coming back as uh, echoes uh, by the target surfaces. Another way of clustering uh, these UQ1 uh, products is based on the uh, possible output. So first of all, we have to distinguish between um, product, uh, the so-called standard product um, uh, with the standard communication mode and uh, the uh, models with uh, uh, the IO-Link communication. Uh, about the model, about this last one, uh, models we are going to discuss later. While uh, with respect to the standard model, we can say that basically uh, they have a uh, uh, mixed output. Why? Because we have a, a, a digital output, PNP or NPN, and an analog one in current uh, from 4 to 20 milliamperes, or voltage from 0 to 10 volts. Let's explore now the main features of uh, um, of this uh, product family. First of all, we have, uh, it's a, a plastic body uh, product. So it's, it's very light, very, very light. Then, as we said before, uh, it's a, um, an hybrid um, body product. In fact, it's a, a kind of fusion between a cubic product, uh, between a cubic uh, sensor and uh, a cylindric one, cylindric M181. It allows you to have two ways of installing it uh, uh, on your plant, on your machines, both with uh, the M18 thread or uh, with the uh, frontal screws. Uh, what about the electrical connections? Uh, uh, all of the UQ1 products, uh, uh, as just uh, M12 plugin, so not uh, not cable products. And then um, one of the most interesting features is related to the um, the possibility of uh, teaching by button. In fact, there is a comfortable little button on the on the body. Uh, which allows you to, to save, to, um, to set all the different options in order to get desired data from the environment. So, um, we say that uh, it's a very light product. Furthermore, it's uh, very compact. It's, uh, it uh, um, requires a very limited space. In fact, uh, I always define this, uh, this sensor as a pocket sensor because obviously you can, you can put it uh, uh, within your uh, pockets. Uh, another important stuff uh, that I, I want to underline today is the uh, supply voltage because the supply voltage range uh, moves between 10 to 30 volts. Why it is so important? It's important because uh, this allows you to install this sensor in mobile applications. 
here uh, through the technical, um, let's say, uh, information here, the technical design, you can, uh, um, technical draw, you can uh, uh, observe uh, the dimensions. So you can see here 38 millimeters or 50, um, 53 millimeters. And it confirms what I said before in terms of the compactness of, uh, of this sensor. I want just here to underline another interesting point because this uh, uh, hybrid configuration, this hybrid uh, body allows you to, um, let's say, to create an alternative uh, from a mechanical point of view, but not only, to uh, cubic photoelectric sensors. In fact, there are some uh, applications where the environment is uh, full of dust, uh, where a photoelectric sensor uh, could have some issues related to the dust on the optic, let's say. Or uh, there are some other um, problematic, some other um, problematic uh, uh, situations where a photoelectric sensor can uh, have some issues let's say, with uh, transparent or shiny objects. Obviously, the uh, ultrasonic technology is able to overcome all of these uh, products, uh, all of these problems. Now, let's go with a comparison between these two uh, series, UQ1 and UK6. Why we are comparing these two series? Because basically, they uh, show some similarities. And which are these similarities? First of all, uh, in terms of uh, operating range, operating distance. Because uh, if you uh, see this, uh, this slide and you compare it with the slide I showed you uh, before, you can see the, that this uh, clustering is basically the same. So we have uh, the A, C, D models, uh, which are classified in, um, in these ranges, 40, 300, 60, 800, 80, 1,200 millimeters. So basically, uh, from this point of view, uh, they seem to be uh, equivalent as products. Another um, point of, uh, similarity, let's say, uh, between these two series mm -hmm. is represented by the compactness of the, uh, of the design of the, of the housing. So the, the possibility of installing them in uh, limited available spaces. But now, uh, obviously, uh, as we, we are going to discover, there are some differences. Let's start uh, um, discovering them. The UK6 models are based on cylindric housing. They are based on M18 thread. While, as I said to you before, the UQ1 sensor is uh, mm, conceived as a hybrid housing sensor, as a fusion between a cubic uh, housing and uh, an M18 uh, thread with, uh, uh, let's say, uh, a fusion of all the benefits related to the, the two different uh, installation modes. What about uh, the uh, teaching procedure? Uh, as you know, but uh, anyway, I, I say you now, the UK6 is based on remote teaching procedure. It means that uh, on this uh, short body, there are no buttons, so there is no possibility of uh, uh, setting, of teaching this, this sensor directly on board. You have to use the cable. Uh, on the other hand, in the UQ1 product, you have uh, the possibility of uh, uh, operate a, um, teaching, uh, a teaching action with this comfortable button uh, on, the, on the body on board. What about the housing materials? The UK6 family uh, includes both plastic 
and stainless steel models. While, on the other hand, uh, we conceived the UQ1 family uh, in order to have just plastic housing. So no uh, metallic ones. In terms of uh, electrical connection, the UQ1 is based on uh, M12 plug-in connection. On the other side, the UK6 models uh, also have a cable connection. And at last but not least, we have uh, the distinction, uh, the difference uh, in terms of uh, output because UK6 uh, is based on a uh, uh, single output. So single digital, NPN or PNP, or single analog output, current or voltage. While um, the UQ1 product is, uh, has a, a mixed output. In fact, we, we, we have seen that uh, uh, there are outputs in terms of digital, let's say PNP plus uh, the analog, let's say, current. Okay. Let's move now uh, on the uh, on the one of the course of this uh, uh, today lecture, the applications. I I repeat to you, there are just uh, some uh, applications because uh, uh, there are uh, hundreds of, of possible. Uh, practical application of these of these products. Obviously, uh, we have not enough uh, enough time to show you all of them. Let's start with this uh, uh, application um, in uh, plastic uh, or uh, paper industries, but also let's say in uh, um, metal metal working uh, uh, plants, where. Um, in other words, the plant is uh, fitted by these uh, uh, rolling coils. Rolling coils which uh, have uh, uh, often some uh, significant size, some significant uh, dimensions, and uh, translated in terms of material uh, is uh, uh, a lot of material rolling uh, per each second. So you can imagine how it's important, how it's fundamental to continuously fill these plants, to not have stops or breakdowns because they are uh, costly, obviously. So how to avoid uh, these kind of interruptions, these kind of stops? By simply monitoring the um, continuously of the material rolling up uh, on, the, on these coils. So if we use this ultrasonic sensor, in general, any ultrasonic sensor, but uh, thanks to the compactness of the UQ1, you, uh, you are suggest to use this, uh, this product because with the mixed output, you can control at the same time both the continuity of the material rolling up and on the other side, by using the analog output, you can control the, um, the diameter. So you can, uh, you can check if the, the, the material is uh, uh, at the end of the, uh, of the coil itself. Let's move now uh, on a food application and in particular, uh, an ending line uh, application related to the packaging process. The packaging process uh, where we have, imagine, uh, a, a conveyor through which uh, a lot of uh, packages uh, passes. So we can have, uh, let's say, plastic uh, packaging, we can have uh, um, irregular objects, we can have uh, uh, shiny transparent object. If you uh, have to choose between, uh, uh, let's say, uh, an, an ultrasonic solution or a photoelectric one, you can uh, uh, select the ultrasonic solution because you can overcome this way the problems related to the um, transparent or uh, shiny surfaces of, uh, of some plastic uh, um, some plastic package. I think, I mean, uh, for instance, uh, 
uh, chocolate or sweeties um, uh, packages. So with a, a new Q1 sensor, uh, you are able to detect the passage of, uh, uh, of these packages on the conveyor and to uh, control the, uh, the feeding of the logistic phase. Let's talk about now uh, totems. Totems are uh, today everywhere in our, uh, in our life, let's say, because they are able to um, solve a lot of uh, um, problems related to services that we are going to, to ask for. A totem in particular could allow you to uh, select some, uh, some options to get the desired service. In this period, for instance, unfortunately, uh, a pandemic period, one of the applications of this totem can be, uh, of course, related to the uh, thermoscanner, thermoscanner um, necessity. Which is this application of a um, thermoscanner? A thermoscanner is a, a totem uh, which is going to measure the, mm, the body temperature of uh, uh, a single user who is going to enter a mm, public, let's say, room, a public uh, uh, space, uh, in order to avoid that some uh, uh, sick uh, user, some sick people uh, enter uh, a room open to the, to, to the public, let's say. Uh, in this way, the ultrasonic sensor um, has the uh, function of activate the uh, measuring, the temperature measuring process. So uh, the, the signal related to the presence of, uh, of the user itself in front of the, of the totem um, has the aim of activating this measuring process. At last, but not least, uh, we can observe here another, um, let's say, consolidated and traditional application related to um, the, the packaging process. In this case, we are not talking about the, the primary package, uh, as we said before, with chocolates or sweets. But we are talking about uh, the secondary, uh, secondary packaging with the cardboard, let's say. In this case, we have some plants working with, uh, with these, uh, automatically with these uh, cardboards. And it's very important to uh, continuously feed these plants with uh, uh, these cardboard stocks. So you can imagine how important uh, it is to uh, detect, to uh, continuously uh, monitoring uh, the, the stock level and which is the uh, solution we are suggesting you today? The answer is, uh, is obvious. It's a new, Q1, uh, a new Q1 product. Okay, now let's go uh, practically on the field to uh, discover how to adjust a sensor uh, because obviously when you use it uh, uh, on the field, th these are the, the, main, uh, uh, the main issues that you are going to, to face. Here, a first clarif uh, clarification. First of all, we have to distinguish between um, the, the teaching, the, the, the procedure with teaching button, so the teaching mode, and the higher link communication mode because in the first case, we are uh, adjusting our sensor simply by pushing the, uh, the button. In the second case, uh, um, we are using the IODD file and we are uh, later on going to show you this, uh, this further possibility. Within the first mode, so the, uh, the mode with the teach button, uh, we have uh, two kinds of products. 
the standard models, so without IO-Link, and the IO-Link models working in SIO mode. In fact, as we are showing you uh, later on, uh, the IO-Link models can work both in, uh, in IO-Link communication and in SIO mode when they are not connected to any master. Okay, so now we can start with the uh, teaching mode uh, of uh, a standard product. Okay, now you, uh, you should be able to see our UQ1 product, as you can observe on the uh, marking of the, the product itself on the body, it's a, a standard product. Okay, and now uh, Giovanni is going to help me showing you how to, to teach. Uh, the teaching procedure for the standard product is, uh, is, uh, is quite simple, but first of all, uh, let me show you uh, the, the two LED LEDs on the top of the body. You can see the green LED, which means that uh, the sensor is uh, catching some echoes coming back from uh, any surfaces. Now you can see that the, the LED is blinking because uh, Giovanni is, uh, uh, is uh, uh, moving uh, on the, the target. Now he has removed it and you, you have seen that the LID disappeared. Another LID is the orange one. It's related to the output and it's linked to uh, a specific setting you have saved in your, uh, in your sensor. Okay, so now we can start uh, with uh, a possible setting procedure. So, the first stuff you have to do is to set the first point, the so-called P1 point. How to do it? Locate your target at a, a specific position you have to set as the maximum distance, and then push the button. Just one second, here as Giovanni uh, has shown you. You can see that uh, LID start blinking. It means that the sensor has acquired the first position. So remember first position, the uh, farthest one. Now Giovanni has moved the target towards the sensor. So to uh, a, um, a nearer position. Now he's going to push the button, okay. As you can see, now the LID is uh, stable and it means that the sensor has acquired both the positions. So we have set, let's say, a, a window within the, uh, within the output is, uh, is working. Now I'm going to show you another interesting stuff. So please, Giovanni, move up the, the target near and, and far. So now, now the LED is activated, now deactivated, because when we are within this window, we have an, an active output, an output equal to one. Why? Because the sensor is working in a um, normally open configuration. It means that within this window, the output is equal to one, outside of it is equal to zero. But obviously it is possible to change the output logic, so to pass to a normally closed logic. How? Simply by pushing the button for uh, about eight seconds. About eight seconds till the LIDs start blinking. Okay. Now 
it means that the sensor has uh, acquired the new mode. In fact, you can see that outside the window we have set before, the output is active, while inside this window, the output is deactivated, is equal to zero. At last, but not least, uh, another interesting function we uh, another interesting function we can have it's the factory reset so a function allowing you to reset all the settings uh, as the, um, the settings we uh, we saved when we produce basically this uh, this sensor how to do it first of all we have to remove the target and then we have to, uh, let's say, uh, to do the so-called infinite teaching procedure. So a teaching procedure without any target. Now we have, uh, we return, we came back to the uh, factory settings. But what about these factory settings? They are related to the minimum and maximum distance because basically from MD micro, micro detectors, a sensor uh, come out uh, um, with uh, the minimum possible distance and the maximum one. In this case, uh, we are talking about a, a new Q1A sensor. So the minimum distance is uh, uh, set as 40 millimeters, while on the other side, the maximum distance is set to 300 millimeters as a factory uh, settings okay now just to just to have a, a, a recap on what we we have seen let's say To switch from normally open to normally close uh, output logic, uh, push the teaching button for eight seconds. Then, in order to set the two points, uh, so the, uh, the two extremes of our uh, operating window, uh, you have to push the button when the target is located in the farthest position and then uh, waiting for the LID uh, blinking, then move the target towards the sensor, so in a, in a nearest position, and push the button again for just one second uh, to uh, let the sensor, um, let's say, save these, uh, these uh, two positions. Now you have set the two points within the sensor is going to work. Then we have seen that um, in any case we make some mistakes in uh, setting the, uh, the sensor, we can come back to the uh, factory settings. We can do the so-called um, factory reset. How to do it? Uh, remove the target and make the teaching procedure at infinite. So pointing at uh, an infinite distance, let's say. Now let's move to um, a more, let's say, complex, complex uh, uh, procedure related to the IOLink models, but uh, IOLink models uh, working in SIO mode. So I repeat. Uh, IOLink sensors, which are not connected to a master, okay, but they are simply supplied as, a, as the other standard sensor. Why we are going to uh, distinguish this, uh, this um, teaching procedure? Because it's quite different with respect to the standard models. In fact, the first distinction is related to the presence of a uh, menu, of a, a setting menu. 
and we have four possibilities. The first one is the window mode, the second one, the two point or hysteresis mode, the third one uh, is a, a background suppression or retroreflective mode, and the last one is the single point mode. So let's explore them in deep. The first one we, we said it's it's the first selection in our menu is the window mode. Why window mode? Because we have two outputs and they are uh, let's say working within a window of two points. So then you have to set these two points as we, we made for instance for the standard uh, the standard model but the interesting stuff here is that these two outputs work as complementary output it means that one of them is working on normally open mode normally open logic the other one is working on normally closed logic so within this window the first one will be equal to one the second one will be equal to zero on the other side, uh, the, the second choice you can, uh, you can select in your uh, setting menu is the hysteresis or two points mode. Why it is so important? It is so important because uh, it can be applied uh, within uh, tanks uh, applications. If you have, for instance, to uh, control a pump, to control a pump, which has the role of uh, uh, get of uh, obtaining or getting the a constant level within the tank itself, so it has to activate itself uh, at a specific moment when your level uh, goes down uh, over a specified uh, um, a specified limit you have said before uh, and. Uh, it is important to stop uh, the, the pump to, to work uh, when you have reached a certain maximum level because otherwise uh, the tank uh, will, uh, uh, will go uh, in overflow. Let's talk about now the background suppression mode. The background suppression mode uh, or retroreflective one um, is based on the suppression of a background, of a wall. It means that uh, uh, the sensor is uh, mm, dilating a, a wall on the, on the backside and is able to catch the passage of any objects passing uh, between the active head of the sensor itself and this wall, which is the main benefit. And we are going to test it with, uh, with Giovanni. Uh, the benefit is that the sensor uh, work no matter of the uh, characteristics of the target object, no matter of the regularity of the surfaces. Because, and here I open a little, uh, let's say, parenthesis, uh, the ultrasonic sensors can work very well if the surface is uh, mm, quite regular. In fact, you, you have observed that our target had a um, flat uh, surface. Why? Because in this case, uh, in, this, uh, in this way, you can grant the maximum uh, return in terms, of, uh, in terms of ultrasonic waves, in terms of echo. Otherwise, uh, uh, there could be some uh, um, phono ab absorbance uh, phenomena. But with the background suppression, you have not these, uh, these problems because simply, uh, let's say, the, the, the sensor is going to catch the interruption of the ultrasonic cones coming back from this, uh, this background, this, uh, this wall. At last, but not least, the single point mode. It's a, a quite auto-explicative uh, mode because um, uh, it's based 
uh, on a on a single point. So you have not to set two points, but uh, uh, just one. So now we can uh, go. We can um, come back to the field. You can observe uh, uh, that uh, meanwhile Giovanni has changed the, the sensor and skipped to uh, an IO-Link model. So we have not uh, at all the, the standard model we had before. We have an IO-Link one, but now it is working in SIO mode. So it is not connected to any master. So now, we can accede the uh, setting menu. The setting menu uh, by simply pushing for eight seconds the teaching button. For eight seconds, so you can enter this uh, um, set of options, let's say. Now you have see that uh, something is changing in terms of LID because uh, each um, selection is uh, characterized by different uh, uh, LID activated. For instance, the first one is characterized by the orange LID and it's the, the so-called window mode. The second one uh, with the, both the uh, LIDs activated the third one with alternative activation of uh, both of the LID and the single point mode with uh, just the uh, the green LID activated. So Giovanni, let's try with the with the first one, which is the the window mode. Um, we are working as I said in window mode, so we have to to set the window. So now we set the first point the farthest one we set here the second point and we have our window an interesting stuff i want to underline now here is a difference uh, with respect to the standard models we said in fact that uh, in standard models in order to um, in order to let's say, to change the output logic from uh, normally open to normally closed, we had to uh, keep uh, pushing the button for eight seconds. With the higher link models in SIO mode, uh, um, this change from normally open and normally closed is based on the order we choose to uh, set the two points. It means that, we f that if we first set the farthest point and then the nearest one, we, can, we choose to work in normally open uh, mode. On the other side, if we first uh, set the farthest point, the nearest point and then the farthest one, we are working in normally closed mode. As you observe now the uh, output is deactivated within uh, the um, within the, the window mm -hmm. and it's active outside the window itself now just to have a, a, a try about the the other modes we can enter again within the uh, selection menu by pushing for eight seconds the button and then we can select the second option. Now we are in the so-called hysteresis mood. So imagine that now we are uh, controlling a pump, a pump within uh, uh, a tank. So you observe now the activated. Now the target is moving towards the sensor. And the output is activated. Okay, now let's go on the background suppression. 
always eight seconds push the button. We select the third option. And we are ready now to uh, save the location of our background. So our target now, it's not our future target, but it represents the wall. The background we have to, let's say, uh, not consider in our application. So let's go with a, a little box and you can see that no matter the uh, irregularity of, of the shape and the orientation that Giovanni is, uh, is, uh, is trying to, to put in front of the active head, the sensor is able to catch this object. But you can uh, also try with a thick object like a pen. So uh, let's see how interesting and powerful is this, uh, uh, let's say, this uh, setting mode. And finally, we can go with uh, the single point mode. So, so that at the end we, we have seen uh, all the different configurations. Okay, now we, uh, with the, the green LED, you know, we have set the, the, last, uh, the last configuration and uh, we are just working on a single point. It means that uh, um, the output will be uh, activated just uh, within the distance we have set as the, this point and it will uh, go equal to zero uh, over this, uh, this distance we have set. Okay. Now we can we can move on we can move on um, our presentation and we can discuss a little bit uh, the, let's say, theoretical um, benefits uh, that we have with the theoretical and practical benefits that we have with the IOLINK communication. So why we should adopt this uh, uh, technical solution? First of all, what about IOLINK, which is IOLINK. IOLINK is a serial open communication system allowing bidirectional data exchange among devices. Why I'm, I'm using this term devices and not just sensor? Because when, um, when talking about uh, IOLINK, we are not considering just sensors which are going to detect and measure quantities in the uh, environment but also actuators. So IOLINK allows these uh, two kinds of devices to communicate uh, among themselves, to exchange information, and so to measure some quantities from the environment and to uh, act on the environment itself. Through, they communicate through the usage of a master. It's, it's quite important. But, the, um, the most important advantage of uh, the usage of IOLINK is the integrability of this system with other automation communication systems. So you have not to, uh, let's say, to become crazy uh, in order to change the configuration when you have to use, let's say, field bus, uh, Ethernet, and other kind of uh, networks. Another important benefit is related to the electrical connection. Someone can uh, think about the special cables which, uh, um, which you need to, to make this, uh, uh, this uh, IOLINK sensor working well. Wrong. You just need a 
three poles standard cable. It's enough to, to make this, uh, this sensor working. Why? Because basically you have two wires for supply the sensor and another wire to get the, uh, the output because um, as we are going to, to see, all the outputs are digitalized. An important stuff below is that uh, uh, an IO link sensor, which is not connected to the master, uh, can work in SIO mode. And we have just observed uh, with the, the teaching procedure that uh, it is possible because we, we, we had not connected it to a master, but it, uh, it worked. I said before that uh, all the outputs are digitalized. So this, give, this gives you the possibility of having analog, both analog and digital outputs. Um, it means that also um, a model with just digital output, um, if we consider the traditional version, can give you the additional information about uh, uh, the analog, about the distances in this case. But how digital signals? Because digital signals can travel uh, from the device to the, uh, the master uh, without any disturbances from external factors, let's say. Because you know, with analog outputs on the other side, we can have some uh, um, interferences, some uh, disturbances of, uh, of signals. In this case, no. So the, the IO-Link communication is a safe technology in terms of uh, data uh, transfer. Then another important stuff is the possibility of have a diagnosis, both of plants where we have installed our sensor and uh, uh, about the sensor itself because we'll have in our, uh, let's say, um, in our IODD file, we'll have a, um, a specific uh, sheet when this information is shown. But another important advantage can be, uh, let's say, can be obtained in terms of plant flexibility. Why? Because all the information you are going to set on your sensor are saved within a master. It means that if I change uh, physically uh, a device, uh, a single device with another one of the same code, of the same, uh, let's say, features, I will be able to uh, download from the master these uh, uh, specific these um, settings I've said before, and uh, I'm able to use them. So it's the maximum in terms of um, flexibility because I'm not uh, linked to uh, physically to a specific device. Then. Um, another important point, another important uh, benefit is that uh, the uh, IO-Link allows you to use, uh, in, uh, um, use sensors in plants with different configurations, with different layouts also. Imagine, for instance, in these uh, bottling, uh, uh, bottling plants, bottling packaging plants where you have uh, um, different bottle sides, different bottle uh, uh, format. And if you do not have an IO-Link sensor, you, uh, you should change, each time you change the configuration, the layout of the plant, you should change the settings of the, uh, the sensors themselves. In this case, with the IO-Link communication, you have the possibility of save different 
plans uh, settings and to use them when they change. So IOLink can support you uh, in all of those uh, situations where you need the maximum, uh, let's say, in terms of uh, uh, flexibility. Let's have a look now to uh, the IODD file. The IODD file, which is the interface between our, let's say, our sensor and the, the data we can get from the master. Okay, now, as you can see, we are in this, uh, let's say, uh, window. Uh, this is a, a control panel of uh, uh, IOLink uh, data that we that come back from from our sensor. First of all, we have this uh, uh, common sheet where we can observe the uh, data of vendor, in this case MD Micro Detectors SPA, and the device we are using an UQ1A model. So let's say the first one we, we have seen in our UQ1 family. In this sheet, process data, we have some information about uh, uh, the main information, the main data uh, of the, let's say, environment in which the sensor is working. First of all, the distance, the distance between the active head and the uh, and the target itself. Now uh, Giovanni is uh, is moving uh, the target, as you can see, and. Uh, mm, Automatically, you can observe this value, which is expressed in millimeters, and you can see the distance, the real distance of, uh, of the target itself. And at the same time, you can see here the two outputs, uh, active or inactive. It depends on, uh, uh, on where the, the target is. So if the target <clears throat> is, uh, within the, uh, the window or not. What about this uh, temperature here? Is it equal to the external, the environmental temperature? Wrong. It's the internal sensor temperature. In this case, uh, we have, uh, uh, let's say, just uh, 26 uh, degrees, but uh, I can assure that uh, we, we can reach uh, higher temperatures like, uh, let's say, uh, 36 degrees but anyway it's uh, it's very important to have this uh, uh, information because you can uh, have a clear picture about the, the way of working of, uh, of the sensor in fact if you see that the sensor goes to let's say 100 uh, degrees something is going wrong so maybe it, it could be a, a solution to uh, discharge the, the the sensor itself. Let's go now on this uh, um, interesting, let's say, uh, section where we can where we have uh, a lot of uh, uh, possible uh, uh, selections we can do. First of all, we can make uh, the teaching procedure. So the, the, the teaching procedure we, we did before by pushing the teaching button, we can do it simply by uh, these selections on, um, on this window. So for instance, now we have selected the first, uh, the first output and we can set the uh, first point, the SP1. So you can see we passed to uh, 139 millimeters. Now 
but first we have to select the right mode. Let's say we are working in a window mode. Okay. We can select the second position. Okay, now we have acquired the, uh, the, the second point. So we have set this uh, uh, first output with uh, these two points, 69 millimeters and 139 uh, millimeters. And we are working in this mode. So this uh, menu here is the equivalent of the selection menu we have seen by pushing the teaching button for eight seconds. While uh, this, uh, let's say, uh, this setting procedure here is the equivalent of uh, pushing the uh, teaching button for just one second to uh, set the desired distance. And here you have the, uh, let's say, the uh, safe solution. If everything goes wrong, you can uh, come back to the factory settings. In fact, you can see we obtained the 40 to 300 millimeter configuration. So, now we, uh, we, we have seen a, a lot of, uh, we have seen a lot of, uh, of stuff today and uh, I think uh, it's time to let you uh, let's say, let you um, compute this uh, information within, uh, within your, your head. So let's have a, a recap of what we discovered during this uh, webinar. First of all, we have talked about the UQ1 series in terms of main technical features and benefits uh, in using it uh, in practical applications. Then we had a comparison between UQ1 and UK6 models by discovering uh, the main similarities, but overall the main differences. Furthermore, we talked about uh, the possible practical applications, the, the, the main, uh, let's say, significant, but uh, I repeat, uh, Let's think about uh, other possible applications. Then, how to practically set uh, all the desired information, how to, uh, to adjust a sensor. Uh, some benefits of adopting the IOLink communication technology and uh, the main information we can get by using the IODD file. So now, the, uh, let's say, the, the time we, uh, we had is, uh, uh, is finished, unfortunately, because a lot of information to, to, to give you, but uh, with a limited time window. But don't worry, because for more information and also for give us some, some feedback on this, uh, on this uh, first webinar, uh, I invite you to uh, write us at uh, uh, our email address info at microdetectors.com and I invite you to visit our website to discover what's going on microdetectors.com. Uh, uh, we uh, try to answer to uh, all your questions you, you wrote today uh, in, uh, in, in our video because we are going to publish this, uh, the video of this uh, uh, 
uh, webinar and uh, uh, we can provide you uh, during the, the last section with all the uh, necessary answers. So see you, see you soon at the next webinar. Bye bye.